In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this subdivision surface piece from scratch. I'm not only going to show you some techniques that you normally cannot accomplish inside of Blender, I'm also going to show you how you can combine both a sub D Boolean workflow with your normal hard surface modeling workflow. So let's get started. All right, before we get started, a few things. You need to remember that when we do sub D modeling, you can't be throwing n-gons and crappy topology left and right. It's just not going to work. When we try to subdivide the mesh, it's going to be a disaster. So that's number one. And I'm going to show you how you can use both booleans and sub D together because a lot of people have been programming everyone to think you can't use booleans and sub D. It's simply false. You just have to uh, retopologize basically. Number two, if you're brand new to Blender, as always, grab our free Jumpstart course, link below. It'll get you up to speed with hard surface modeling very quickly, just like it did for the other 70,000 students that have went through it. So let's get started. So I'm not going to use any sort of, you know, complex example because there's no need. It's going to deliver the same point. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a cylinder, okay? And whenever we're running, you know, sub D, you don't want to be starting with a crazy amount of segments or a crazy high resolution. Reason being, and I'll quickly show you in case you're new to this. Reason being, if I go into wireframe and I run a sub D modifier, let me just uh, add some creases here to hold that. You're going to see that if I turn this off here, the more I subdivide it, the higher resolution it gets. So there's no need for us to start at a higher resolution. We can start lower, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and add in a cylinder. And I'm just gonna use, I don't know, 16 vertices. That might even be too low, but we'll start with that. Okay, let's go ahead and go to top view. And I'm just gonna box select these faces here. There we go. And then E to extrude. And we're just going to extrude it right to about this point. That should be fine. Cool. And let's just go ahead and select everything. X, limited, dissolve. That'll clean up the top. And then we're just going to have a cool looking shape like this. And uh, I think I did this in the last tutorial, actually. Now, if we want to put this back in the center, just because I like to, I'm going to set the origin to the geometry. Shift S, selection to cursor. Okay, so now we have a shape like this. I could have just beveled a cube. I don't know why I do it this way. Just have it. But anyways, now what we're going to do is we're going to add in, let's see, well, first of all, let's try to make some sort of interesting shape here so it's not so boring. So how about we take this upper face and press Control B and just make some sort of cool, you know, effect like this. And again, I know it's blocky, but once we start adding in a sub D, it's going to get more high resolution. It looks weird at first, but um, if I were to add in like a crease or something here, you're going to see it actually does get, you know, significantly higher resolution. So we don't need to worry too much about it looking blocky right now. I wouldn't worry about it. What I do want to do, however, uh, this just kind of helps me. Uh, sometimes if you press Alt V, assuming you're using hard ops, you can turn on wireframe here and you can just kind of see the topology outline. So just keep that in mind if you ever want to hop into that. So let's go ahead and add in a cylinder here. I'm going to add that in and I want to grab it on the X and then just hold control, we'll snap it to there. Looks good to me. And I actually want to fuse these two things together, okay? It's very easy, we're gonna shift click, control plus on the numpad, or with hard ops, press Q, booleans, and then union. And it's gonna mess up, so just select the main object with the boolean, change this to exact. And essentially what that's gonna do is uh, fuse them together, you have to use exact for this. Okay, and then we're just going to apply that boolean and we can just hide this cutter, press the H key. Okay, so looking good so far, uh, we are going to have a bit of a mess up here because of the boolean. Very easy fix, just press X, limited, dissolve, sorted. Um, there's a little bit of a mess going on over here as well. Not too sure why that occurred because we should have been lined up, you know, close to perfect here, but that's fine. What we can go ahead and do is just clean this up manually real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and merge this here. If you have machine tools, it's a free add-on. You just press the one key on the keyboard and then I can just dissolve out that garbage right there. And then let's go ahead and press Control R, add in a loop cut. And if I go up here, I can go to vertex snap and then snap it on the Z right to this vertex. And then we can just go ahead 
and just merge that all together. There we go. And then just to do that on the other side, I'm gonna symmetrize with Alt X with Mesh Machine. Alternatively, if you don't have Mesh Machine, uh, which you should get, I don't know why you wouldn't, but you could go here and use the Symmetrize feature in Blender. Okay, so now we have you know a basic mesh like this. Now if we try to start running a sub D, it's kind of okay, but the main issue here is we're running a sub D you know, on this massive end gone on the top and bottom. So there's kind of a few different things we could do to fix this. Uh, the first one is to simply use a crease and this will effectively stop that edge from folding down. It's like a perfectly hard pinch basically. So what I can do is I can run a sub D, go up here, press shift E and then just pull the cursor back. Can do it down here as well. And then we're basically just gonna have this cool result and yeah, we just kind of have you know a flat top and bottom basically so i could do this over here as well just press select like this area press shift e you can kind of make some cool effects this way as well it almost kind of like fuses you know naturally into you know some sort of sub d looking thing but i'm not going to actually do that there the first thing i want to do is i want to retopologize this portion right here. So I'm going to turn off the sub D by clicking this in edit mode. And this is very easy to do. Uh, I'm going to press control R. We're going to add a loop here. Uh, what I'm probably going to need to do on this one is merge it, but that's going to skew the curvature. So I'm going to try to avoid doing that. Let's just see how this will look. We'll press the J key here. And then we're going to need to Maybe join this up over here, just like that. And now we kind of have this cool shape going on. Could add in another one if I wanted to. I could just kind of distribute this a bit more evenly. You know, something along these lines just depends how picky you want to get. Pretty cool. And then you can kind of see we have this cool looking shape going on, which is great. Only issue down here is we're subdividing this triangle. You know, a lot of people say you shouldn't be subdividing triangles, but they don't, you know, they say that without understanding what it actually does. All subdividing a triangle is going to do is turn it into a quad. Now, it won't be the cleanest, you know, compared to if you subdivide an actual quad. Let me show you. If I go in here and, you know, subdivide a quad, it's going to be a pretty clean subdivision. But if it's a triangle, you know, it's still okay, but it's just not as a not as even and consistent as if it were a quad. So don't let people scare you away from subdividing triangles. The main reason this would be an issue is if you had like a character, which I don't teach this, I teach hard surface, right? But if you had a character, for example, in like an area where you're gonna animate, like maybe the eyeball is gonna close in an animated film, you don't wanna have, you know, subdivided triangles around there because it's gonna end up pinching, it's gonna look weird. But that's kind of the main reason you wouldn't want to subdivide a triangle. But in hard surface situations, it doesn't matter. You know, people are just spoon feeding you garbage. Uh, but in this case, you can see it's fine. It's giving us the general shape that we're kind of going for. This thing looks cool, right? Kind of fuses together nicely. It's a combination of like this smooth shape combined with hard edges. It's really cool. Now, the next question here is how can we eventually, you know, get some proximity loops kind of in this area over here, right? So the first thing I could do is straight away, I could press uh, Control R and then just kind of tighten it this way. So I can at least get that portion sorted, as you can see. Now, how would I get this area sorted? So the first thing I could do is maybe use the knife tool with the K key and then just cut over to here, press Enter, and then just let the loop finish the rest and then join that and then just run a symmetry. And then there I kind of have like a natural proximity loop going on over there. And then what I could do is maybe I could start up here and let's just move this up, double tap G and then just move this down G and then Z. And then I can just kind of cut this in manually. In fact, what I'll do it does require a little bit of thought. So if I have this here joined together, we have to kind of think, you know, what what could we do in this situation? Well, I could, you know, maybe merge that over there or merge that over here. And then what that's going to do is kind of disrupt the curvature. It's not terrible. 
I could kind of slide that back. And now we actually have a quad in this area. Now, you know, when you disturb the curvature like this, what I mean is we're kind of disturbing the natural flow and bending, you know, this topology here. And this could be problematic. Um, but ultimately with sub D, it's really not a huge issue because we're subdividing it. It's going to smooth it out. But here, basically what we're doing is we're bending a quad. So if I bend this quad, it just doesn't look very well. Now, if you start running sub D, you're fine. And that's effectively what's happening over here. So the best solution is to go in the top view, go to vertex snap, and then just press G and hold control. And make sure you constrain it to the Z axis. So press G, shift Z, and then hold control. So now it's not gonna actually move off that axis. And there we go. Now we actually have the curvature maintained and we've made a much more kind of proper decision here. And then I could just kind of you know, slowly slide up these vertices just to keep it a little bit more even. Symmetrize if needed. There we go. Now a cool little trick here, what you can do is you can go to select, select all by trait, faces by sides. You can go to greater than four and just kind of see, or um, equal to three if you want to see the triangles. And you can see we actually have three triangles here. We could ideally turn that you know, into one. And what I still need to do is make sure I keep that proximity loop that I initially wanted to hold this side. So we're going to do that real quick. Just going to add in something kind of like this, maybe dissolve that one out. And that could be fine. And just kind of play around with this. You get the idea. And then I can just go here. Let's take this vertex and then just merge it over there. There we go. It's actually a lot better. Now we kind of have a much nicer, you know, fusion in this area. It's not so like soft, I guess you could say, compared to this side. Speaking of, I'll just go ahead and symmetrize that over. And you can see this looks pretty good. Obviously not the top because we just have one massive end gone up there, but it's a flat surface, so honestly, who cares? It doesn't matter all that much, especially for hard surface objects. So looking pretty good. So, you know, a lot of people will ask me, they'll say, you know, why aren't you stressing about the triangles? Why aren't you, you know, retopologizing the top here and this and that? The answer to that question is I don't care. You know, I'm doing hard surface modeling, right? And for the flat areas, I couldn't care less about the geometry. You know why? You might think it looks bad now, but when I end up coming in here to apply the sub D, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go in here. I'm going to literally nuke it with limited dissolve and then it's gone so now i basically just have the geometry i need to get the clean shape i'm basically using sub d to create a shape not to get a certain topological outcome i guess you could say so you could also go up here press shift g coplanar and just press f to fill that in if you don't want to affect anywhere else and there you go now you're back to just a normal hard surface object but you've utilized sub d not being perfect with it or anything, but you basically utilize sub D to get yourself a cool looking shape here that you normally could not do with a traditional Boolean and bevel workflow. So sub D has its uses. I made a video on this recently, unless I upload this one first, but sub D, it has its uses. You know, you can use sub D to get these cool, cool types of effects here that you couldn't get otherwise. And just to prove it to you, let me show you. If I came in here and I got a very similar shape, and for once, I just did it with a cube, not my weird way. Let's bevel this, you know, give it a good amount of segments. And then what we could do is come in here, do the same thing. Just add in something like that. And let's go ahead and add in a cylinder. Uh, I actually didn't check how many vertices were here. Probably should have done that first, but it should be fine. Let me just give it some more segments. Let's just do... 32, move this over. It's not perfectly aligned, um, but you'll see my point in a second. It doesn't really matter. So if I fuse these two together, we'll run to an exact Boolean, all right? And I were to try to just ignore this junk over here. I just want to show you for this particular area. And I were to try to bevel just this portion. Good luck. You're going to have just a mess. It's just, you can't do it. You can't do it no matter 
you know what you try to do here I can even dissolve out some of this junk no matter what you try to do here you're just not going to be able to bevel this area like you'd want to so this is where sub D can come in handy and just get the basically accomplish the unaccomplishable if that's even a word you get the idea so I know I don't showcase a lot of sub D on the channel I'd like to showcase some more examples kind of like this in the future because sub D does have its you know situations where it just makes sense to use it especially in a situation like this if you want to get a particular you know outcome that you couldn't get otherwise you know a lot of people will say just use CAD well fair enough but I don't want to use CAD I can just do the same result in you know a few minutes I'm good I like blender it's my go-to choice anyways you get the idea so I hope this is kind of useful kind of gave you you know the bigger picture of how you can utilize sub D while still maintaining you know that hard surface modeling workflow and at this point nothing changes you literally go in here you can add in your bevels you could come in and you could start using your booleans again just like you would you know like I would in one of my normal tutorials just get in here and just pretend you didn't even use sub D at all just go back to your normal workflow and do what you've been doing all along right so you can kind of have fun with that and just you know get fancy get creative while still having these really cool shapes that you couldn't otherwise achieve so hope this video is useful if it was I don't really care if you thumbs up or comment it doesn't matter to me but what I would appreciate is if you checked out some of our stuff over on blenderbros.com like I said we do have a free course hard surface modeling jumpstart if you need to get started in blender and kind of get the hang of the ropes uh, you can enroll in that. It's completely free, and I'll link it below. Hope the video is useful. See you in the next one.